Have you ever wrote a letter to someone while they were incarcerated and they never responded to you? They never even sent a letter back? It makes you wonder like, damn, are they mad at me? Have you ever stopped to think maybe they never even received it? Today I'm going to be breaking it down and speaking to y'all about what a ghost letter is. And trust me, when I speak about this mail, here's five years worth right here from when I was incarcerated. Check it out. A hold down man, suitcase this, my cell phone, I'm a charger, don't walk with a limp, get it knocked off or missing, you gon' get it, next time I see you ass, you gon' leave airlifted. Yo man, k Frog TV back in the building, y'all go ahead and hit that like, subscribe button, make sure you hit the notification bell so you can see it first, check your bell, make sure it's placed on all, not personalized, cause some people ain't receiving notifications, some people are only receiving some notifications, so make sure your bell is on all, not personalized. Alright, today I wanted to speak, you know, on mail call, alright? I'm going to speak on what goes on behind doors when it comes to mail. All right. And as you've seen on my intro, I have five years worth of mail right here. Okay. Strictly mail. This was my mail while I was inside a Florida Department of Corrections. All right. I'm going to explain to y'all about mail call. All right. Now, a lot of people probably wondering like, damn, why you have that? You saved your mail. You know, a lot of people throw everything out when they leave and stuff like that. Me, I'm different. I decided to save all my mail while I was incarcerated just due to the simple fact that those are considered memories. Memories for me and memories for my kids when I am no longer here. Okay, one day my kids will stumble across that and be like looking through it or something. You know, anything is memories for them when their parents is no longer with them. Okay, so I saved my mail. That right there is actually 85% of it because I actually was at a, uh, another institution one time and they literally made me dispose of my mail. Okay, and that's just how they do it. Everything ain't guaranteed that they let you keep it. You're not even guaranteed to get your mail. But I'm going to break it down to y'all how it is when mail comes. All right. Now, every camp I've been to, mail always comes at nighttime is when they're going to hand it out. All right. That's normally when they hand it out. Now, no matter what institution it is, it could be a jail. It could be a prison. There is always a mail room. That mail room is where your mail goes and gets inspected. They open it on up. They check it. They make sure there's nothing in there. They make sure everything that is sent, it's, it's gone through with the policy that it requires in order for an inmate to receive it. As far as like down here in the state of Florida, when you mail something to someone, you're allowed up to 10 pages of paper in one stamped envelope. All right. So... If you want to send someone pictures or paper, or if you write a letter, it has to round off to 10. So if you send four pictures, that means your letter can only be six pages. Okay. You can't do a letter and then add 10 pictures. You understand? So if you're over one, they might not, you know, they might let it slide. It depends on where you land at, but a lot of camps are real petty to where they won't. They won't even let some things slide through if it goes up to nine items when it literally says 10. And that's just how it is. Now, I want to break it down to y'all about ghost letters. All right. I know a lot about those. I've seen the officers pull this grimy shit and I've had it happen to me a couple times as well. All right. When I was in confinement at Charlotte CI and at Calhoun, both camps, the officers would come around late night shift and that's when they would hand the mail out you know after showers around six o'clock you got to wait until you know five o'clock shift change till they get there and then they'll end up handing the mail out they would literally hand you a empty envelope and just they, they'd slide it under your door and just keep it moving to where you're like hey hey man what what hey boom 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 hey sarge boom 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 you go to banging on the door like hey man where my mail at man and then they what do you mean? That, that's all we have here. I guess that's what your people sent you. Man, my people ain't sent me no damn empty envelope. Think my people filled it out and put a stamp in there and there ain't no empty envelope? Man, y'all lost my mail somewhere. There's no way in hell. That is called a ghost letter. That is literally the type of grimy stuff that officers pull while you were in prison. Just to aggravate you. You know, they may be having a slow day at work and they want to gas someone. You know, they want to put their hands on an inmate. 
So they'll do some shit like that because they know who's going to buck over the mail. I was one of them. Every single day, man, where that mail at? Yelling on the door. Man, where that mail at? Go to banging on the door. Boom, 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 boom. Man, where my mail at? Like, to get them because, yeah, they have to the end of their shift to hand the mail out, okay? But they're supposed to hand it out to you. They'll literally be so grimy that they will come around and hand it out to you after lights out. After the institution powers all the lights out and you're in your cell, they'll come slide you your letter to where you literally got to lean on the, uh, the little window in the door. You got to put your piece of paper on that just to read it in the dark. And then the reason they do that, it doesn't give you time to respond. See, in confinement, mail is the main thing that everyone's looking forward to besides them trays because everyone's hungry. But... When someone sends you a letter, if they handed you your mail around 6, 7 o'clock like they should, you know, when they come around to do Master Ross account, everyone who writes a letter back is supposed to have it in the envelope. You're not allowed to seal it, but you got to put your stamps and fill it out. And then you got to slide it through the crack of your door. So when the officer comes around to do the last count, he'll see it and he'll take it off the door and he collects them. So when you get asshole officers... They're going to fuck around and not give it to you until after all that. So that way, you got to wait till tomorrow just to do your letter, just for it to go out tomorrow night. Okay? Mail is not guaranteed. Even though mail is a priority, it's not a privilege. All right? They're supposed to give you your mail. You know? But I've been in situations, especially when I got into it at Calhoun with some officers, they literally put a hold on my mail. And I didn't know nothing about it. Because... When you turn your mail in, you know, they're going to have a drop box, whether they have one inside the dorm or whether they have like a mailbox by center gate. When you go to chow, you'll see people dropping everything in the envelope or inside the day room, inside their quad, wherever it may be. Every dorm is going to have a mailbox. If not, it is in the middle of the compound, like I said. So I was sitting here sending mail out to my old girl. They already suspended my phone because I told my old girl, I was like, man, these crackers playing with me. You know what I'm saying? Cracker trying me about my mail. So when I said that, you know, they got all in my face. They pulled me to the side and threatened me and all this stuff. They said, oh, you want to call home like a little boy, right? You want to call home to mommy? So I was like, don't worry about it. It won't happen again. They're like, yeah, we know we won't. So when I went to get on the phone later that night, it says that my pen was not valid for that institution. So they basically deactivated my pen. So I couldn't call home. They literally made it to where there's nothing I could do to contact nobody right now. So I was sending letters to my old girl, you know, telling her, hey, man, I guess my pen's not working. Boom, boom, boom. You know, letting her know what the deal was. Now, I ended up getting transferred. OK, I went to the work camp for five days. This all happened when I was at the work camp. I went there on a damn Thursday and was back on Tuesday, back at the main compound. Only lasted five days. Didn't even get to try their chicken. I got sent back before dinner. And everyone knows that they put they you know they put they they effort into that whipping game when it comes to at a work camp. So when I came back to the main compound after five days after getting tattooed in DRs, when I came back, when they do mail call to hand out mail, all of a sudden I'm getting like six seven letters, and they all had a sticker on it, unauthorized by the warden unauthorized by the warden. That means the mail that I was writing my old girl to let her know why I ain't hit her up and all this stuff like that, they were holding it while I was at the work camp. So not only did they turn my phone off, but they actually held my mail also. You see, they can literally hide you and do what they want to do to you. Have you all banged up, beat you real bad, and by the time that you get a hold of someone, no one can believe you because you ain't got shit to show for it. You know? So... It's very grimy how they do with this mail. So if you end up writing someone and they don't respond to you, you might have to send them another one. It ain't that they're ignoring you. You know, it could be. I don't know y'all's, you know, relationship or situations. But chances are they didn't receive their mail. Or the mail did come and they purposely got a ghost letter. Like I said, I've seen officers do this shit to me personally. And they do it to people inside confinement. You know, just to piss people off, make them bang on the doors so they could come out with the gas and spray someone and write some paperwork. Feel cool that they got to spray someone with chemical agents. All right. Now, as far as like I said, it isn't it isn't a privilege. It's a priority. 
The reason they have a mail room at each jail or institution is because someone in that mail room is certified to go through your mail. So when they check your mail and all that shit like that, you know, then they, 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 they send it to the dorms. You get what I'm saying? They open it up and they send it to the dorms. Now, people, are, as far as officers, are not supposed to go through your mail in your dorm because they are not certified. And I found this out in the county jail when I got in an altercation over some pictures. They tried to take my pictures that came in after the mail room already approved them. So it already went through the mail room. Now it came to my dorm. And then when it's time that they're handing it out, the officers would like, you know, just to be disrespectful, they'll pull your pictures out in front of everybody and show everyone your pictures real. And then say, this one's not allowed, this one. And they tried to do that with me. They tried to do that with me over a picture of my dad when he was younger. In here, my dad's not with me no more. You know, I lost my dad and got set up the day after he died. So I was in the county jail at this time waiting to go to prison. And then I got a picture of my dad sent in of when he was younger. And the officer tried to say he looks too much like me. That I'm not allowed to have a picture of myself. Which down here in Broward, you're not. So you know I caused hell. I booted up. Like off rip. Like one, that isn't me. You know what I'm saying? Two, that's my old boy. I just lost him. So you know I'm going to raise hell. You get what I'm saying? And three, I don't give a damn if I go to confinement or whatever it is, so you know I'm fully committed with it. Well, long story short, when the captain ended up coming to the dorm, he made that officer give me my pictures back. And I specifically heard him tell him he does not have the authorization to go through mail. It was already checked in the mail room. I mean, he can, he can grab it and open it and make sure there's nothing in the envelope and stuff, but he's not supposed to fully go through your letter. Or, 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 you know, your pictures. It made it through the mail room. You see what I'm saying? But the way that this system is, is there's so much corruption and so much shit going on that there's no way you're guaranteed to get anything. And like I said, I had to, half of my damn mail got thrown out in the middle of my transferring process. Because when you get transferred, you got to carry everything, you know? And then, like I said, you could start off with a hundred items. And then as you're getting transferred, this camp will take nine of them. Get to another one, this one will take seven of them. This one, and by the time you get to where you're finally staying at, out of 100, you only have 21 items now. Yeah, they took your boots. They took your damn radio because you didn't have a receipt. You know, they took whatever it may be. They just take so many different things, okay? That's why with this mail, like I said, you're never guaranteed to get all your mail. All right, now what's in here is... All the above of anything you could think of, whether it's letters from females, whether it's pictures, whether it's from homeboys, even fans from before I even went to prison, K Frog TV was already known. Whether it's damn my subscriptions of my magazines while I was in prison, whether it's shit from the damn courts, no matter what it is, whether it's boomerang letters, okay, for anyone who don't know what a boomerang letter is, see down here in Florida, you're not allowed to write inmate to inmate so you would send a boomerang letter you get what i'm saying which means what i would do is is i would send a letter to someone i know on the street and then they would fill out an envelope like if it's from them with their name on it and put my letter in it and it would go to the next person that's it you know what i'm saying but the, what a real boomerang is a boomerang is when you write a letter right you write a letter, like say I wrote a letter to my homeboy, Bobby, and he's in a different prison. I would put his name and everything on there. I'd put his name as if it's coming from him, and I'd make it to where the address that I'm sending it to is wrong. But for the return address, I'd put his information in the camp he's at. So that way when I send it out, it's going to make it through a couple places. It's going to get stamped and make it through a couple places. But then when it reaches the closest post office, it's going to say that's an inaccurate, you know, address, unauthorized address, unable to forward it. And it's going to go return to sender and it's going to go right to him. So it's kind of like it's a boomerang. I threw it out there, but instead of it coming to me, it went back to the person whose name it was on. You see what I'm saying? So that's how you would contact from inmate to inmate or you could just send it to someone, make them put it in an envelope and put their name on it like it's from them. Because I've received so many, during mail call, when you get the letters, they'll give you a little slip and it'll say unauthorized, inmate, inmate, 
they, they catch on if they're really reading into your mail. You see what I'm saying? But like I said, that ghost letter thing does exist. So if someone isn't responding to you, like I said, it doesn't mean they're most likely ignoring you. You never know what it is. Like straight up. I had subscriptions of all different types of magazines you could think of. I had the Us Weekly. I had the OK Magazines. I had um, like Auto Trader, but it was something different. It had to do with old school cars. I had uh, Hip Hop Weekly. I had so many different ones. I even had one that was called um, some shit. I forgot it had. It was like a rock and roll magazine. And I just liked it because it had a bunch of cool ass pictures and stuff. But anyways, you could pay for the subscriptions and then you just put your prison address with your name. So the magazines come in, you know. I've had it to where officers will buck you on your magazines. Literally, you'll see the mail come in and they'll literally place it on the counter inside of their bubble. And then because they're not, they're sorting it now. You know, like if, it, if, if the dorm, say you're in G dorm somewhere and there's four quads, G1, 2, 3, and 4, they're going to bring all the mail from G dorm in that bubble, sit there, and they're going to separate it into four piles, you know, quad one, two, three, and 4, like that. So when you see it, you see the mail, you're like, oh, look, I got an OK magazine. And then, you know, you get them you, on weekly, so you know, oh, it's about that time. It's about that time. You know if you ain't got your damn magazine you're supposed to get. So... Next thing you know, you'll notice that you didn't get the OK magazines or they didn't even hang, hand them out. And the officer will sit there and read your magazine while he's on shift. He'll be sitting in there. You're not even paying attention to what's going on because he's got your magazine. You feel what I'm saying? And then when you go to confinement, they don't even give you your magazines. You're not allowed your magazines back there in confinement. So they keep those. They keep the magazines. You may get out of confinement. It happened to me one time. I got out of confinement at Calhoun, and after I did 60 days, when I got out and I went to go collect my property, I had stacked the magazines in there because they were coming while I was in confinement, but you're not allowed to have them back there, all right? And now, everything that I've seen as far as how the mail is, it's like, for instance, there's a center gate on the compound, and where there's a center gate at, they have like a railing, then they have these hooks, so when the officers come on shift that, you know, are working the shift to hand out mail, when they go to walk through the center gate, on them hooks are going to be mail bags. And the bag looks like, kind of like what a firefighter wears. It's like a fireproof bag, but it looks like the color of a fire, firefighter's like outfit. And those will be hanging on hooks with like a tag on it. Like it'll say G dorm, B dorm, A dorm. So whatever officer that's working, when he comes in, you'll see them all come in with their lunch boxes. They got to grab that bag and carry it to their dorm. You feel me? Now, because during the day shift, all the mail that came was getting processed in the mail room and separated in the bags, which means the day before mail is the mail you may receive today. But if anything came today, you'll probably not get that until tomorrow. You know, and I've literally made it through parts where they bucked us on mail. We were in confinement and they said to hell with giving y'all mail and left us back there for a week. Had us banging, busting sprinklers, making them spray us and everything because they refused to give us our mail. Mail runs every day of the week. I mean, in Florida, I'm going to say, except for Sundays, you know, even Saturdays mail runs and holidays. Some holidays stop mail as well. If it ain't no holiday and it ain't the damn weekend, you shouldn't be bucking us on our mail. Even if we don't receive nothing individually, you should still be handing some shit out to people. You know? But they'll literally buck people to where it backs your mail process up. And when you're in confinement, you definitely notice because you're counting down the days. It's like, man, I sent this person a letter. I know it's going to take them three days to get it. So I'm not going to, if they write back that day, I'm looking at basically a week before I even hear back from them for my first letter. So then as you start getting the first couple times you do it, you're going to be off track with your, you know, your letters. You know, it's like you're going to be responding to letters that ain't got nothing to do with what she, she or he that you wrote are going to respond to. So y'all are like, you're, you're, you're backwards with your letters until you get the process right. You feel me? So these officers literally be trying people and don't give them their mail, you know, because if you piss an officer off, he's going to do the most he can and make your time miserable. You don't even have to piss an officer off. They could come to work in a bad mood. 
He can bring his damn relationship drama, his family drama, whatever his problems is on the streets. They bring it to work with them, you know, and it's easy as one, two, three. You know, it's broken down like the mail comes here, then they move it from point A to point B. Point B separates it, puts it where it's supposed to go, hangs it up, then C is supposed to come around and pick it up and bring it where it's supposed to go. You know, now I remember when it was time for mail to go out at Calhoun, they have a they have a watchtower right by the center gate. They have a tower right there. OK, and normally what they would do is. You know, they got a little door that the person will open the door and they walk up the little spiral. It's like it's so small in there, but they walk up the spiral all the way to the tip top of there and then they slide the window open up there. So when you walk by and you try to look up, they yell at you, tell you don't be looking up there and all this stuff. Like if they're going to shoot you and stuff, they don't want you to be looking up there. But that's just to have, they have eyes from up above. What I've seen them do personally with mail is that same person who was up there in that watchtower they have like a damn conveyor belt thing with a rope. So they'll go like this and drop a crate, like a milk crate, all the way down. And then since it's right by the center gate where the mail bags are supposed to be hanging up, I guess the mail that's going out, I've seen them put it all in one bag and then set it inside the crate and that person would wheel it up and pull it in the window. And then that means they're up there going through it. They're up there checking the mail as it's about to go out. It doesn't matter if it's a lunchbox, a rifle, anything like that. They stick it in that milk crate and they have that person go very better instead of, for some reason, it's so tight for them to walk up there. You know, it looks like a little damn tower, like a, like a lighthouse tower that you would see on a damn island somewhere. You know, that's what it looks like. So they use the milk crate and they had that person conveyor belt in it. I used to look at them and be like, damn, that shit looks like a mission. Every day you got to do that. I'd hate to work in that gun tower, in that tower. You know what I'm saying? So... When mail comes up missing a lot, you know, you played your end, you sent it to the person in prison, you made sure they had enough postage on there, or even if I was in prison and I was writing you, I made sure I put enough postage on there, you know, I put enough paper in there, or whatever it may be. You can literally mail a blank envelope with a stamp on there, you don't have to be nothing in there, you know. Some people would send just paper to people, you know, like me, I had people that would, you know, write me a letter. And then when I would get the letter, there'd be a few blank pieces of paper behind it. When someone sends you something like that, that's letting you know, write me back. You get what I'm saying? It may throw a couple stamps in there as well. You know, a couple stamps. So that way it's like, oh, okay. I used to get um, little envelopes folded in half placed inside of an envelope. So now when I open it, if a girl wants me to write her back, it'd be like a two-page letter. It'd be like five pieces of paper, a stamp in there, two stamps, and then one folded over envelope. So that lets you know, write me back. There's no reason why not to write me back. Well, there really is if the person who's working doesn't like that inmate. And they'd be like, oh, look, they'd be probably sitting there laughing at your pictures, going through it, showing your little loved one's pictures to all the other officers, hanging out, you know, just to make your time miserable. Oh, look, he don't need this. He don't need this. He don't need this. And then later on, when you get in an altercation with them five months down the line, they just or, or one day they could just see you're pissed five months down the line. You ain't even got to be in confinement. You could just be in your dorm. And then all of a sudden, when you walk in all mad or whatever, officer knock on the glass to get your attention. When you look over from his bubble, when you look over, he'll open the drawer and pull a picture out of your girl. Like just to get you in a bad mood and just to crank your gears. You know what I'm saying? That's the type of thing these officers will do. You feel me? And who knows? You left that girl then because she swore she wrote you and sent you pictures and you just felt like she was like every other female that was just lying. Man, hell no. Nah. Well, I ain't never getting them pictures. Man, you tripping. That shit sound good. And really, you may have just the officers intercepted your shit. And that's the type of things that go on. All right. And I've literally seen them gas so many people that just stand up for their self because they know their family did not send them a ghost letter. I know for a fact my family did not just send me this. There's no way in hell. And you know your family. So you know what the hell would they, you know, that's like trying you. That's just like in confinement how they have ghost trays where an officer will give you the tray with the lid on it because he's on camera. There's no audio though, but it's just visual, you know, video. And then he'll give you the tray with the lid on it, walk away. So as long as they seen him on video giving you that tray in that flat, you get it in the lid, man, man, you go to banging on the door and all this and all that and everything. They don't know. They don't know if you hid that food that quick. That's what they're going to go with. They're going to say you could have hid it that even if he gave it to you and you slammed 
and you shot it right back out empty. All he's going to say is he had two trays in his room. He, he That one there was from yesterday. I was yelling at him yesterday because he didn't return his tray. He didn't give us his tray back yesterday. So now that I gave him the tray this day, he threw that one out. You see, that's the type of shit they'll do to cover it up. Because they literally try people left and right. And it's always a process when it comes to the mail. Not just confinement, even on the compound. You know what I'm saying? They, they want your name, your DC number, all that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got to show them your ID, Harris, L86368. And then they'll look, and if they don't like you or whatever, they'll be like, you'll get this later. Just to try you. Just And it could be an officer you don't even know. He just don't like the way you move, the way you rock, the way you carry yourself. You feel what I'm saying? He could tell that you, you got things going on. Everybody likes you for some reason, but he don't. So he'll take it out on your mail, things that get to you. Because between me and y'all, mail is one thing that literally helps an inmate in their damn incarceration time. I don't care who you are. You receive a letter, even if it's a bad letter. You know, even if it's a bad letter, it still shows someone cared to send it to you. You understand? Someone still took that time. You feel me? Like when I when I was in the county jail one time, I did a whole 364 in the county jail, which was a, was a day sh which was a day short of a you know a year and a day. That's what the smallest sentence you can get in prison down here. So I did a 364 in the county jail one time, and my oldest son's mom, she wrote me fuck you letters every day of the week. Oh, I hope you get 30 years. This. Oh, don't drop the soap. This. Oh, puss that. Da, 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 da. She wrote me fuck you letters every day of the week. And I'd literally get them because the way they do mail, I'd get them like four out of five days. I would literally get mail and it would be her just selling me out. Her just selling me out. Like, and I didn't respond. You feel me? I didn't respond for a while. You know what I'm saying? But it was still like, shit, all that rah-rah you're doing, it's just because you look at it like, you know, you're just hating because I'm not with you no more. But you literally took the time out of your day. You're on the streets. I'm in here. I'm not writing you back from in here, and I got nothing but time on my hands. You see what I'm saying? She took the time of her day to do all that from the streets. So who was really mad? Who was really more miserable? You see what I'm saying? But them same F you letters I was getting got me through my damn 364. Them same letters, boy, I used to get them, and I'd be like, uh-oh, to my buggy. I'd be like, uh-oh, boy, I got another one. You think she snapped? And I'd just be in there and reading out, oh, oh, here we go, boy, tune in. I'd be reading it out loud or selling me out to my bunkie. We'd be in there laughing, kikiing, you know, fun as hell, roasting her. Like, like just roasting her in there, having a roast session. That's just how I did my time, you feel me? And even though it was bad letters, every single one she said was worse and worse, meaner and meaner, just to try to, you know, kill my vibe. But no matter where I go, I'm always, you know, I'm always shine. I'm always be the one that... You know, I, I got my own vibe inside. So, like, no matter what I'm going through, I make the best out of a worse situation. So, like, no matter how much she tried to make me feel bad, I was still loving it. You feel me? Like, shit, at least I'm in here and ain't got to deal with it. You know, like, making jokes, like, because I'm in jail. You feel me? But them bad letters still help you. Okay, even if it's a bad letter about a loved one passing or anything like that. Yeah, that's a bad letter and it hurts to find out like that. But imagine how you would feel if no one even told you. You get what I'm saying? If you was in there and someone you love close to you ended up passing away, it hurts. You get the mail like, oh my God, dog. Yeah, such and such. is You know, you feel bad. It hurts. And you'll always remember when you got that letter being told that about that person. But... Imagine how you would feel if no one even told you. Just all of a sudden, you ain't getting letters from your old girl no more. Or your old boy or something like that. And you just think he's leaving you hanging. Or she's not fucking with you no more, your old girl. So you're in there the whole time running your mouth about it. Like, man, fuck her, bro. Leave me in here and shit, bro. I've been writing her for months, bro. She ain't you know, you get mad, you start talking back. And then you find out, boom. Well, no one told you five months ago she passed. You see? So it's like letters like that. It's a bad place to receive news like that. But at the same time, it's better to know than to not find out. You see what I'm saying? So mail definitely plays a big part. If you know someone that's locked up, reach out to them. Because I'm telling you, I don't even know what is all in here. 
But I know one thing. This right here is about a fucking 20 pound bag of memories. Literally. And not a day goes by that I will forget living through a pen and a piece of paper. Like finessing females out of money, you know, sending I miss you things to girls, you know, different shit. Pictures to my dogs from in prison, getting pictures, everything. An envelope, a stamp, a piece of paper goes a long way. Even if they don't respond. Even if they don't respond, someone can send you one letter while you are incarcerated. When you get out, if they ever mention that person's name to you, oh, did they, what's up? Did you hear from him? What's it called when he was locked up? Just to know that one letter, you'll be like, yeah, she wrote me when I was in prison. It's not, no one knows if you, that sounds like she wrote you your whole bid. When really not, she just sent you one letter. See that you'll never forget that. Just like you'll never forget the day you get locked up, no matter how long you're in there, and you'll never forget the day you came home, no matter how long you've been released. You feel me? That's the same thing with mail. Make sure the people you write's receiving their mail. Make sure they ain't receiving a ghost letter. This right here is supposed to be, you know, a message as far as like, I know people got loved ones in there. I'm not the only one that went through it. I still write people to this day. Everyone on the streets, you know, ain't got time to write letters. I get it. I understand. You know what I'm saying? What me and all my dogs used to say is, shit, I ain't expecting you to write me, bro. I know how the streets go. That's what we used to say. It's all good, bro. I ain't expecting my homeboys to write me or nothing like that. I'm not, I'm not expecting that. Answer the phone, though. You feel me? But it literally doesn't take much. Okay? I can't name how many times since I've been home from prison. And I posted it on my Instagram a bunch of times. That I would literally go to CVS and spend $85 to $100 just printing out pictures. And then I'll send it to 10 different inmates. That's just how I am. I'll send them 10 different inmates. And then I'll drop my new cell phone number in there. Boom. Tell them all to hit me up. And then when they find ways to call me, boom, next thing you know, oh, what's up, bitch? Uh, Christmas coming up, boy, I got you. 50 in his account. What's up, boy, I got you. Oh, for Thanksgiving, boy, you're going to eat good. Uh, 100 in his account. You feel me? I just look out for people that I know are good. You see what I'm saying? I don't look out for no snake-ass people. You feel me? I may have looked out for snakes before until they showed their hand and bit me. You see what I'm saying? That's it. So... If you got someone that is incarcerated and you can't send them money, don't avoid them. You feel me? If you can't put money on the phone, don't avoid them. You know, anything. A letter goes a long way. And you would not believe how much shit comes off of someone's shoulders when they receive mail while locked up. And it could be the smallest shit. You know, when you go to Walmart or wherever you may have a, a place where they sell Holiday cards, whether it's Mother Day cards, Father Day cards, birthday cards, and all that shit. Out here on the streets, we don't even walk down that aisle. I don't even look that way. Like, what do I need to be looking at cards for? But in prison, in prison, when you receive them, it makes you feel good. I've had females send me Father's Day cards and write in there, oh, I didn't even send such and such a Father's Day card, which is the father of their child. Oh, happy Father's Day, frog. And stuff like that. So cards go a long way. And it just makes someone smile. It brings light to their day. No matter what they're going through. In there. Everything pauses the moment they get mail. That's it. And it means so much that they're going to be dwelling on that same piece of mail. For a week or more. They'll get that damn letter and be walking around floating like they're the shit now. And feel so good. They got a letter from their girl. And they'll be walking around acting like can't no one stop them or nothing like that. And they just look so much gloomier. And now they feel like they have enough in them to knock the time out. So if you have someone in there, find them, send them a letter. It could be someone that was one of your homeboys or a friend you went to school with years ago that you ain't talked to in years. It'll blow their mind even more if they receive a letter from someone they're not expecting to hear from. If there's someone that's incarcerated that you always wanted to say sorry to for something. Sorry we didn't work out. Sorry that me and you ain't an item no more. We didn't, you know what I'm saying? It's over with. But I just still hope you're doing good, man. Hold your head up. The streets miss you. Or hold your head up, man. It ain't the same out here. You know, anything like that. I used to get 
different shit from fans and everything. I, I would open up mail and it would be a damn ripped out of a coloring book. It would be a black and white coloring page colored with crayon. And then it would be some like a, a, a girl or something out of nowhere saying, oh, my son loves your music, this and that or whatever. And, he, and then it would have kids handwriting in crayon. It would say, hi, K-Frog, spelt like, in ki like a kid wrote it. And then the girl would write and all that stuff like that. Like I used to get stuff out of nowhere, pictures, different things. And it makes you feel good that someone still thinks about you. And it will be someone that you're not even thinking that knows you probably. Or someone that you're not even expecting to hear from. And it literally only takes picking up a pen. That's simple. That's all you got to do. You feel me? But be on top of that mailroom's ass and make sure they giving that person they mail. If someone is telling you they did not receive their mail and you sent them the mail, don't be so quick to take it out on that person in there because nine times out of 10, they probably did not get that mail and they think you were lying. You see what I'm saying? So just be prepared for things like that because I know a lot of relationships them fell short like that. A girl saying she sent this, a guy ain't receiving it. The guy's streaming at her over the phone saying she's lying, who she out there messing with. She's lying. She ain't send it like she said she did. And she's saying she did. Now she's not talking to him or answering his phone calls. Now he's going to confinement. I done been there, done that, been through all that. Every single time I went to the county jail, I went to confinement. Every time I land in confinement in the county jail and land in max custody. Why? Because I'm the type of person that I need to know someone out there cares about me. If I feel like they don't care about me, what I'm wasting my time on you for. You got people in there that, you know, you want to talk to. Put money on the phone. Straight up. I found that out the hard way. My first time I ever went to jail. My old lady wanted me to put money on the phone. Like, what you mean? I'm in the county. You want me to put money on the phone for you to talk to me? Nah, if you want to talk to me, you put money on the phone. I shouldn't have to put money on your phone for me on the inside. You see? That's how it is. So like I said, man, if you got a loved one that's in there, man, send them some mail. Do whatever it is you can to do to let them know they ain't forgotten. No matter how much time they got, they will still smile. You'll be able to make that person feel like a life sentence or 40 years. They can do it because they got someone out there that is rooting for them. You feel me? That's what it is, y'all. But I appreciate y'all watching this video. Like I said, I broke it down to y'all how the mailing process goes and is people really receiving their mail or not? You never really know. But anyways, till next time. Y'all keep y'all head up, man, and you already know, man, it's fraud.